the award-winning so you are listening to the critical mass radio show orange county's business talk show focused on exploring top You are listening to the Critical Mass Radio Show, Orange County's business talk show focused on exploring topics of interest to CEOs who are leading middle market companies with your host, Richard Franzi. And welcome to this edition of Critical Mass Radio Show and Podcast. I am your host, Richard Franzi, and this is podcast episode number 1096. And ooh, we have a good one for you today. Octane is building the SoCal of tomorrow by connecting people, resources, and capital to drive technology, the technology industry, and the growth, along with new jobs here in Orange County. I've invited CEO Bill Carpu to join us to talk more about Octane. Bill, welcome to the show. Thanks, Rick. I really glad look, to be here. Yeah, I'm glad to have you here. Let's start with a little bit about you. In all of the things that you've done in your career, what do you think has prepared you most for the role of CEO at Octane? You know, it's an interesting question. I mean, I started my career at Xerox, uh, moved to Icon Office Solutions, and then uh, was an operating partner at Blackstone. So I look at it and say, I don't know that any single event prepares you for a CEO role, but I, from my perspective, it would really be the sales and customer focus at Xerox, the people focus and leadership at, at Octane, and kind of the accountability and financial uh, focus at a, at a private equity firm such as Blackstone. Uh -huh. you know, so, that's, that, that, that's kind of been the foundation, and I feel like I could pull from each of those every day. So I'm gonna ask you off the script, are you a copier salesperson? Oh God, that's what I started with, yeah. Me too, <laughs> really? so did he, the owner of the radio station. Mm -hmm. I, I started with Canon. You started, okay. with Xerox. started with Xerox. I had a job with Xerox back in Pennsylvania, but I relocated to Southern California, and I ended up with Canon's distributor out here. But enough about me. So that's that's yeah. a great training ground, isn't it? N I, I don't think there's a better way to me start either. in sales. Me you know? either. So. Door to door. Yeah. Anyway, enough about that. See, you learned something new about your guests here on Critical <laughs> Mass Radio. Who knew, Paul? Who knew? All right. Well, Another copier salesman. That's right. Three <laughs> in the same room. And... Uh, um, what is the, for those that might not know of or know of the name but really don't connect with the mission and the purpose, what's, what's the history of Octane? You know, it's an interesting backdrop. It started in 2002. It was the brainchild of the then uh, vice chancellor of UCI, uh, then Edwards, Abbott Labs, um, Western Digital, and Connexent. Okay. So those five executives thought and felt that there was an opportunity to really coalesce and bring together Orange County and a platform such as Octane would really be uh, such, a, such a platform. Uh, so we've evolved tremendously since 2002. I've been the CEO for only three years, and frankly, I've lived here since 1998, and I didn't really know much about <laughs> Octane until I was asked to be the CEO. Well, so it's kind of been this under-the-radar, well-kept right? secret. Uh, but the organization's really evolved. I'm the third CEO, and I, I think each of them that have, uh, that have come through, uh, previously uh, Gary and Matt, uh, all added a tremendous amount of value and uh, uh, evolved the company or the organization uh, into what it is today. What are the initials? What's the acronym? What's it stand for? Orange, Orange County Technology Action Network. Okay. And why okay. is the E small? I don't know. Okay. Uh, so yeah, it's just yeah, a branding yeah, thing, yeah, right? Uh, okay. Yeah, it looks hip. Yeah, I like it. Yeah. All it is, that's exactly what it is. It's just branding. Okay. Nothing, nothing more than that. Right. And, and so what, what was the problem that these leaders of these large corporations and UCI w were addressing here in Orange County? Why did we need Octane in 2002 and today? In, well, you know, the, the problem then, which really is the problem today, is what's the ecosystem? How okay. do you pull it together? How do you create a network of like-minded organizations and, and, and individuals that can help elevate uh, an economy? And the economy in this case is Orange County. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, you know, in our early days, what we were was really primarily a networking organization, and we held meetings and conferences and meetups and, and things like that, and, and it was just really mundane. Uh -huh. And then we evolved into an accelerator, okay. and we, we built an accelerator that, that basically works with companies each year and, uh, and, and, and works towards getting them funded. Uh, we've funded over 500 companies at the rate of about 1.7 billion dollars wow. as of as of today wow and um you know we've built our own fund recently and now we've created a growth services platform so the organization has evolved 
to provide greater value and greater efficiency to the ecosystem here in Orange County. Okay. And, and are, you, are you still focused in the area of what I would think Edwards and Western Digital, you know, kind of medical and technology, is that still a primary driver? Yeah, that's a great question. And uh, yeah, ex exactly. So we're tied very heavily to the university infrastructure. And then pretty much everything we do is either tech or med tech. So, okay. you know, it's, it's in the life sciences, it's in the technology field, and that becomes a bit broad. And, you know, we certainly have our, our pockets and our hubs of competency here in Orange County. Uh, but our focus is tech and med tech. Okay, because you use the very powerful term that, um, that we're going to talk about a little bit throughout this, and that's the ecosystem. Correct. Around, because that, that really is taking a holistic look at getting a thriving startup community. It does take a village doesn't it? An ecosystem. It, it, t it takes a village. It takes no one individual, no one player can manage an ecosystem. It takes collaboration right. underscored. Right. And, and, it, and it's various needs at various stages of the company too, right? I mean, you, you really need to look at, it, look at the life cycle of these early stage into funded and running companies. Ex exactly. I mean, you know, you've got, you've got companies from a funding standpoint that are looking for their first hundred or, or $200,000. And generally those are a little bit early for what our accelerator is. Okay. Uh, but you know, there, there you're dealing with individual investors. You're dealing with angel Angels, investors. Angels, right. Yeah, exactly. And then, and then you start to move into a more established seed round and then your series A, which is your, which is your institutional round and that's that's where our accelerator okay uh fits and then we've got portfolio companies that are now in b c d rounds and more elaborate and sophisticated uh institutional investors enter strategic investors enter and then you work a company right through to an exit right and and th that is we're really off script i hope you're okay <laughs> with that we are that's and, fine and my engineer's let's, telling me let's I got, just talk i got a, i got a minute left with you so <laughs> I, I gotta gotta kind of wrap this sec sec section up but you know Building that ecosystem that delivers results then attracts more investors and more. It's sort of a flywheel, isn't it? That the better you do, the more. Yeah, momentum it's a flywheel or a self-fulfilling prophecy, however you want to look at it. Okay. And I mean, you know, really, the, the two areas of focus we have are increasing access to capital and increasing access to expertise. Wow. And every early stage company or even small, mid-sized business needs capital but they also need functional expertise to help them grow and bring revenue. Right. So those are the two areas that if we put them together, and it's not an either or. It's, right. you know, capital's table stakes, you need them. Right. But you, 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 know, you also need to obviously perform after that. Right, because you're talking about small companies and they only have so much expertise because they only have so many people because they can only afford so much at that stage, exactly. right? So having that ecosystem around them might insulate them a little bit. I believe in the power of peer learning. You know, I build mastermind groups, so this kind of work is really powerful. We're going to take our break. When we come back, I'm going to ask you, you know, we've been talking about ecosystem. This, I found this on your website, and I, and I love the phrase, an ecosystem inspired by ideas, enhanced by science, and fueled by innovation. Well, let's just talk a little bit about what that means to Octane after the break, Bill. Okay. Okay, we're going to be right back, ladies and gentlemen. Don't go anywhere after this word from me. Best-selling author Richard Franzi's written what Marshall Goldsmith has called an incredibly poignant foray into the realm of unintended consequences of executives' decisions. In Killing Cats Leads to Rats, Mitigating the Unintended Consequences of Business Decisions, Richard Franzi takes a close look at the impact of unintended consequences on business performance and employee engagement. Through the retelling of the experiences of executives at Pepsi, Wells Fargo, Kodak, Volkswagen, and many others, Richard paints a compelling real-world account for how executives leading firms of all sizes must do a better job of anticipating and controlling the outcomes of their strategic business decisions. Killing Cats Leads to Rats is available through major bookstores in paperback, Kindle, and audiobook formats. To learn more, visit www.richardfranzi.com. And welcome back to this edition of Critical Mass Radio <coughs> Show Podcast. I am your host, Richard Franzi. All of our shows can be heard anytime on iHeartRadio, iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker.com. Several hundred former guests' website, former guests whose CEOs have been on the show, they put the player up on their website. You know, since we started this show in 2009, we've reached hundreds of thousands of listeners through the live stream here on octalkradio.net, the podcast on the platforms I mentioned, as well as the other channels we use like YouTube. Simply type 
type critical mass radio show in your favorite podcasting software and you'll get our weekly shows with great guests like Bill Carpu. Bill, before the break, I said I wanted to ask you about this. An ecosystem inspired by ideas, enhanced by science, and fueled by innovation. How does that build on sort of what we, you and I talked about before the break? So, you, you know, Rick, we, we, we connect people and ideas with resources and capital. So ideas are the centerpiece of our process. More importantly, we have really smart people um, that we work with. Uh, the scientists and engineers create this, these ideas and improve upon them. Utilizing the uh, university infrastructure in, in SoCal, the combination of great ideas and, uh, and, and smart people fuel innovation at really at its, at, at its highest level. So I think as you start to put all of that together, it's taking ideas, it's matching them with smart people, and it's accelerating those and commercializing those and getting those out in the market. And, and I think a part of the, the proof of the success is not only the kind of companies that get started and survive and thrive, but it's also the impact on um, employment. And, and I know that you guys are very proud of the amount of capital that you've been able to raise, but you're equally proud of the amount of tech and med tech jobs you've been able to cre create. Can, can you share a little bit of that with our audience? Yes. Yeah, so uh, we've created uh, to date from, 20, uh, from 2010, excuse me, uh, 8,203 jobs. Wow. So uh, I would take these are good paying jobs. I would take, I mean, they're, they're, tech, they're, med tech. Yeah. They're what's considered high paying jobs. They're, they're right in about the 83,000 $83, dollars. So range. you can live in Orange County. You can live in Orange you County. You can have a good life. Yes. Yes. You could live in Orange County. And so the the average the average salary is eighty three thousand uh, dollars. We've created eighty two hundred and three. Where our forecast by twenty twenty five is to create twenty two thousand wow. uh, new high paying jobs. Um, the other piece that's really that I'm particularly proud of is that eighty six percent of the companies that come through our accelerator receive cash or funding, uh -huh. receive capital, and out of those eighty eight percent since twenty ten are still operational. So by any measure, when you look at uh, early stage or startup communities, 88% success rate of those companies funded is just unheard of. It is. So that goes back to the whole idea of the ecosystem, right? And and sort of insulating these people a bit from what might happen if they if that w support network wasn't there. It, it does. And and you know I think there's there's people. I mean I go back to three years ago when I started. There was a lot of people that were trying to convince me that there was not an ecosystem here in Orange County. If there wasn't, you couldn't have those kinds of numbers. Right. So it's there, it just has never been intuitive. You've kind of had to dig and scratch okay. to find it. Okay. And, and it's, it, it's, it's a little bit more intuitive in places like Silicon Valley. You're right, and yes, I get that. Okay, Bill, um, I know that Octane puts on regular high-end, what I opinion, what my opinion, high-end events. High-end events as far as great people who are commanding the stage and great content that's coming from the stage, but also great people in the audience and this kind of community idea. Um, I see you have another one coming up, the Technology Innovation Forum, TIFF. That's, that's correct. Uh, can, can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, so our, our two signature events are, are TIFF in the spring and MTIFF, which is medically focused, in the fall. So TIFF this year is uh, May 31st and June 1. It's at the Marriott uh, Fashion Island Resort and Spa. And um, it's, it's, I mean, we've got a phenomenal lineup, phenomenal amount of content. So it's a two-day conference. The first day is really all about content. It's about learning. It's about thought leadership. And when I say that, it's not about saying, well, this is what cyber means and this is how you protect yourself, or this is what AR or VR are, or this is what artificial intelligence. It's about applying those technologies to your business, mm. growing your top-line revenue, and making your business more efficient. So. It's not a definition of what the technology is. It's a utilization of how you're going to, you know, bring that to bear inside of your business. The second day uh, is mainly investor focused. So, uh, you know, a couple of panels in the morning, some pretty heavyweight VCs, some family offices, and we have eight of our best companies that have come out through the launchpad process that will present to investors in the. Uh, and the desire and hopes, obviously, of raising capital on the spot. And the audience can watch this? Correct. And so Correct. it's live? It's front? live. It's live. It's it's live Shark Tank. All right. You know? right. This is awesome. So you use the term Launchpad. What do you mean by that? So Launchpad is the name of our accelerator. Okay. And it's supported by the SBDC. Okay. A small business development. Uh, and, and uh, you know, that's, that's what we've had in place since late 2009. 
and it's a process, but it's a separate business unit inside of Octane okay. that works with these companies and helps prepare them for institutional funding. So, so you mentioned two events, and I know TIFF is closest technology innovation forum. What's the other one? So we also, at the end of June, on June 29th, we have an ophthalmology summit. Uh -huh. So it's it's one day. Uh, our, our our keynote speaker for that will actually be the CEO of Allergan, uh, Brent Saunders. And, uh, that's a good get. That's a it's a it's a great get. And Brent's Brent's terrific. Uh, he's terrific in this in this audience. And Allergan's been a terrific partner of ours. Um, and you know we'll have uh, some of the key opinion leaders, many of the leading ophthalmologists in the country, industry investors, and this one is no pun intended, but focused specifically to ophthalmology. So it's a much narrower audience that we're drawing from. And why <clears> is that appropriate to focus and dedicate a day to that? Well, I've lived here since 2002, and what I didn't know until I started working at Octane is that Orange County is the epicenter of ophthalmology innovation in the world. Really? Really. Is, is that because Allergan has been here for that long, or is there, I mean, I, I don't know that that's a fair question, but I mean, that, I, I, I'm fascinated by that, frankly. Yeah, well, there's, I mean, certainly Allergan has had a lot to do with it. At the same time, you've got organizations like Zeiss, like uh, Alcon, like J&J &J Vision, uh, and, and all of that that have that have basically flourished here okay. in Orange County, and then you've got just a, 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 an assortment of early stage and startups. I mean, Glaucos, uh, mm -hmm. you know, which is a uh, you know, it's still an early stage company, but but in, in commercialization, uh, they're, they're they're public at this point, and uh, you know, so you've got a a really wide range of ophthalmic companies mm -hmm. uh, here. It's interesting too, as I've talked with you and kind of looking at this ecosystem, the importance of the educational institutions that are sort of fundamental in many ways to uh, these e these type of industries and sectors really taking off. I don't think you can have an innovation ecosystem that's not centric around a university infrastructure. So we're <clears throat> you know we're we're blessed here. We've got UCI, we've got Fullerton, we've got Chapman uh, here in Orange County. All of them are good partners of ours. Uh, at the same time, if you look at Southern California in totality and break down the walls of the counties, you've got USC, UCLA, Cal State, UCSD. And again, uh, here, here's a fact that probably many of your uh, listeners don't know, is that Southern California, those three counties graduate more engineers and more computer scientists than any other location in the Are country. Are you serious? Yeah. I, that I did. Ring the gong there, <laughs> gong man. So our... Loyal listeners know whenever they hear the gong, they, they're they always listening, Bill. But there sometimes you go. I go, go back, there spin it go. back about 30 seconds and pick up what Bill just said. So, that, so and it's great if you can keep that brain in Southern California then, right? If you're graduating so many of these students that have this knowledge, making it attractive for them to be able to stay here rather than having to go to the Silicon Valley or someplace else. To well, you know, that's exactly what we work on with the universities is how do we, how do we take their students and then get them engaged in the in the innovation ecosystem that exists here. And so we're working very, very collaboratively, and the universities are with us, and, and other organizations that are very like-minded and similar to us, is that, that, that whole retention aspect, I would say, is a top priority of the deans in the okay. universities. Right. How do they retain them here locally for job growth and present those opportunities so they don't need to go someplace right. else? Because that fundamentally reinforces the ecosystem. Well, it's, it's, it's again, that self-fulfilling prophecy continues to fuel it. Right. Yes. All right, so we have a few minutes left here on Critical Mass Radio Show and Podcast. You have a diverse board of directors and an outstanding group of outside advisors. What role do the directors and advisors play in Octane's continued growth and expansion, Bill? You know, the value of our board members and advisors, I, I look at it and say, has no boundary. Uh, they're committed to the success of the entire ecosystem. Uh, which is important, and ultimately the success of Octane. So it's not just their commitment to us, it's the commitment in elevating Orange County and making this ecosystem that much better. Our advisors really give their time, they pay it forward, they've been successful, uh, and they, they want to work with smaller companies and give their time and benefit the entire community. Hmm. So the job growth and what we're doing in job growth, they could all get their head around. Um, you know, when we, when we talk about we raised or helped raise 1.7 billion or, or 2 billion or whatever, that's, that's, that's a number that a lot of people can't understand, right. uh, whatever. But right. you know, when you start talking about job growth 
and what that means to an ecosystem in terms of moving that forward, uh, everybody could kind of get their head around that. Right, yeah, and, and significant numbers like 8,300, is that what you said? 8,300 8,300 going to 22,000. Right. Of good paying, average 80-some thousand. 83,000. Yeah. That, that's that is awesome for the for the the future of this community and this county as it continues to grow and expand absolutely is so um we're gonna have to have you back on i'd love to if you come back on we'll talk more about octane because i I, who who listening in my audience ceos business owners entrepreneurs who should in your opinion spend more time and sort of learn more and maybe become more involved with your organization and the larger ecosystem you know, we've got such a diverse group that's part of our ecosystem. Uh, you know, I, I, I don't want to say it's everyone, okay. but we, you know, it's, it's the universities and the educators. It's the entrepreneur that's starting a business. It's investors that are looking for quality early deals. And then it's the small, mid-size, and large companies that are out there that want access to talent, want access to innovation, want access to great ideas. So really it cuts across the entire diverse nature of what we have here and I'd say in that it's not what industry you're from or what you do as a job if you're interested in innovation if you're interested in technology if you're interested in making Orange County a better place come work with us that sounds awesome and how do they find you online octaneoc.org would you spell that for me o c t a n e o c .org okay there you go ladies and gentlemen no excuse now i want uh, there's going to be a quiz See if everybody can short answer Octane's role in Orange County. Bill, thank you for being a friend of the program. Welcome to the Critical Mass community. Rick, thanks a lot. This was terrific. I have enjoyed it. All right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, my engineer tells me we've got to go, so I'll thank him. Thank you, Paul Roberts, who also owns octalkradio.net, as well as our producers, because without our producers, we wouldn't have this show. It's They are Joan Park, Crystal Nunley, <coughs> and Haley Stern. If you'd like to connect with me on social media, let's start with LinkedIn. LinkedIn is the first place we'll start to have conversations, and we can go from there. I am Richard Franzi, F-R-A-N-Z-I. And until our next show, I hope all of your business decisions will move your company in a positive direction. You have been listening to Critical Mass Radio Show Business Talk Show, focused on exploring topics of interest to CEOs who are leading middle market companies. With your host, Richard Franzi.